Hey guys, today I'm going to give you an analysis on a very interesting case, Yale vs. Wizards of the Coast LLC. It is a case from a tournament judge bought a lawsuit against Wizards of the Coast, arguing that he and other Magic tournament judges are employees of the company and therefore should receive wages under both California and federal law. So his argument and his lawyer's argument was that the magic judge, Wizard of Coast requires judges to complete and maintain certification, saying that this amounted to the company's power to permit or prevent judges from working. He also argued that the certification process was to benefit the company and help and the judges will help increase participation in magic games. Also customer service, which I screenshotted for you now because I'm pretty sure they're going to take down that page. The counter argument and I'm going to read you the court's decision and the court sided with Wizards of the Coast, but it's not that the court made these conclusions themselves. They were nudged along by Wizards of the Coast. So the decision I'm going to read verbatim, and it's very fascinating. So order denying plaintiff's motion for yada yada, defendant acknowledges that if it requires stores and tournament organizers to use judges for specific sanctioned competitive level REL event, magic events. For this type of store, tournament, the store or tournament organizer is responsible for selecting and engaging the judges and complying with the applicable laws with respect to the event. Head judges for the competitive level Grand Prix sanctioned events, however, are selected and engaged by defendant, defendant here being which of the coast. For all of the Grand Prix events held between October 29th, 2011 and December 31, 2016, defendant entered into written independent contractual agreements and financially compensated the head judges that it selected. So the system that we currently have in place was not the system we had before. And that's very important to understand that this lawsuit has changed the landscape for magic judges, even if most of them don't know it yet. It has shifted liability. So for Grand Prix events held on or after January 1st, 2017, the tournament organizer is responsible for the selection and all other aspects pertaining. So before 2017, the Wizard of Coast would select the judges, the head judges. And those head judges would select their friends and colleagues and you know, you know how it goes, right? But after January 1st, 2017, it was up to the tournament organizer to select. Very key difference in what happened. Defendant organizes and runs only three tournaments, the Magic Pro Tour, the World Magic Cup, and the Magic World Championship. Defendant runs all aspects of these three tournaments, including, among other things, engaging individuals as judges. Okay, so I'm going to slide right down to the plaintiff's argument and why it didn't work. Plaintiff's dec decoration, which are fairly characterized by defendant as cookie cutter decorations, provide many interesting details about the important role judges play in defendant's elaborate magic card game enterprise, including plaintiff's experiences as judges, information about the judge certification process. All of this is public. So it's a fascinating read, by the way. Defendant's expectation for judges and judging activities plaintiff characterized as work. Defendant objects to nearly every statement in the decorations, asserting that each statement lacks foundation, constitutes improper opinion, testimony by lay witness, is not based upon personal knowledge, constitutes hearsay, and or violates the best evidence rule. Many of defendants' objections are well taken. Nevertheless, the court has considered the substance of the decorations, which supports the plaintiff's assertion that defendants view judges as volunteers. Specifically, defendant judge code states that membership of the judge program is voluntary or at will, 
from both sides. A judge can withdraw from the judge program at any time, and the judge program can choose who to suspend to suspend a judge, change a judge's certification level, or even decertify a judge altogether based on their conduct. Defendant's public case entitled What Does It Mean to Be a Certified Judge? similarly states that being a judge is volunteer work and a volunteer activity. More importantly, and this is the key component about compensation that I have been... So if you work at GameStop and you do some training, does GameStop pay you for training? Most places, especially corporations and large multi-billion dollar entities pay for training. However, since they want to avoid the liability. So if there's a liability and something, let's assume something bad happens, who's to blame? Wizard of Coast says, not me. And this case says, not them. If a judge gets punched in the face, who's to blame? Who's going to pay the insurance claims? You see why this is important? It's because you, you, you have a huge company, um, you have a huge, huge company and they are shifting liability and they're doing it in such a way that I think it's kind of demeaning for the judges. So let's continue. Plaintiff Adam Shaw states that he worked as a judge at approximately seven magic events during which he performed numerous duties for the benefit of the defendant and was not paid wages. There are no facts explaining how any single decision, policy, or plan implemented by defendant required him to become a certified judge or to attend any given sanctioned events, much less the facts explaining how a single decision, policy, or plan implemented by defendant required or obligated him to perform work or duties at a sanctioned event without getting paid wages or other compensation. Other compensation maybe being a judge promo packet, which are now worthless, right? Plaintiff Shao states that he served as head judge for at least three shank- sanctioned events and in that capacity received instructions directly from defendant and implemented defendant's scheduling and hiring decisions among the judges in his group. Again, Plaintiff Shao failed to provide facts to establish that a single decision, policy, or plan implemented, yada, 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 Moreover, two of the named plaintiffs, Shaw and Justin Turner, admitted during deposition that they were compensated by defendant for judging events. See Turner. Plaintiff Turner also confirmed that defendant compensated him for travel and hotel expenses on at least one occasion. A third plaintiff, Joshua Stanfield, we're not, we're not going to get into his case right now. In absence of evidence of a single decision, policy, or plan, governing the engagement and compensation of judges at sanctioned events, adjudication of plaintiff's claims would require an individualized plaintiff-by-plaintiff analysis of the specific circumstances under which each plaintiff, quote, worked as a judge at every one of the over 1 million sanctioned events that were conducted by stores, tournament organizers, and or defendants throughout the United States. Under this circumstance, it would not serve judicial economy to adjudicate the potential claims of a nationwide putative class consisting of 3,850 judges in a single action. Let me summarize this for you. Blank you, judges. Blank you. (laughs) I mean, can you imagine these judges have served and worked at over a million sanctioned events and there's apparently 3,850 of them, and their information is publicly shared on database, their location, their names, their DCI numbers. Uh, MTG headquarters has proven that it's not difficult to get them if you wanted to. And there's no background checks. There's very there's a lot of governance. So how do you get to be a judge in a pro tour? Well, you know the head judge is a pro tour. You have a lot of interesting questions about liability, and they have all been shifted to judges. I would not want to be a judge. Um, It seems like you would never get compensated. 
or it seems like you're not going to get recognized. You can never be officially recognized. You do all this hard work. You're not even playing magic. You're learning a book of archaic rules that are t is totally useless in real life. And instead of spending your time maybe becoming a developer, an artist, or a graphic designer, getting better at your skill set, which could make you money, you're spending your time being abused by Wizards of the Coast. Imagine a company that makes a billion plus dollars, a billion dollar company, a multi-billion dollar company, and they're relying on volunteers, 3,850 of them, to run 1 million events. It's, you ask why magic is so profitable, A, it's cardboard, so margins are huge already as you've seen from the Chinese counterfeiters who can produce these for one or two cents a card. And B, literally everyone is either underpaid or volunteering. Go, if you don't believe me, go on the Glassdoor, uh, glassdoor.com, type in Wizards of the Coast and see, so they're in Seattle and Seattle is very competitive. Uh, compare the salary of Wizard of the Coast and then find a job and then type it in for Seattle. Most jobs they're posting are anywhere between 25 to 50% under market value. They expect you because you're so passionate for the game that you love the game so much to give up everything. To give up pay, to give up self-respect, and to defend the brand at all costs. And then the brand runs you over an ice cream truck, admitting that, yeah, we made a mistake, but it wasn't our mistake. It's, you know, local tournaments and judges' mistake. It's, they should have really reported themselves, right? Because that's what they boasted. Anyway, my point is very simple. When you have an organization that runs on volunteer work, um, and it's pretty much a nonprofit. Like, I mean, let's look at the structure of it. Everyone's either underpaid or working for free. And somebody's getting hand over fist over money. And they are killing it in margins, let me tell you that. But does that need to be the case? Can you treat judges better? Can you give them a little bit of money maybe? Could you pay people average salaries, market value salaries? Could you hire better developers? Could you have a better culture, workplace culture? Um, just look at Glassdoor and you will see what I'm talking about. It is very, very much a who do you know? And you must be here to work for us for... It's pretty bad. Anyway, bye guys.